Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr. I'm out here on the road. And uh, this week's Monday Morning Podcast, I actually recorded a few weeks ago with uh, the great Jim Gaffigan. And uh, we were only supposed to do a half hour. It was supposed to be a Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday Morning Podcast. Um, and I don't know what happened. We started talking. We talked comedy. We talked life. And then somewhere about a half, about halfway through it, we just started shitting on each other. And had a great time just trashing each other. And somehow it ended up being like an hour and a half long. So guess what? It's now a fucking two-parter. Sorry. I did five shows and I'm getting over a cold. No, I don't have COVID. And yes, I think the world is round. All right? Or is this the fucking robot deep state version of me? You don't know, do you? Um, so anyway, uh, this is going to be the first half. It's going to be on Monday. This is the Monday morning podcast that you're probably ready to watch. And then we got the uh, the Thursday afternoon, which will be the second half. Or maybe it's just audio. I don't know. We did it at ATC. I have no fucking idea what's happening. But he told me to record a video, so it must be video. All right. That's it. Oh, for all you Colt fans, congratulations. All right. You had a hell of a first half. You know, we gave you a fucking field goal. And, uh, but you know, Mac Jones, he threw two. Does the guy implode? No, he comes right back and he scares the shit out of you. All of a sudden it's 20 to 17. You're like, oh my God, do we need to go weigh their cleats? Is this why they're coming back? So I, I love that we got humbled. And I think, uh, you know, that's, I'd rather lose in December than in January. Cause we all know what losing in January is like, don't you Indianapolis? especially to the Chargers at home. Sorry. All right, that's it, everybody. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. And also Hanukkah and Flat Earth. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast. And uh, every once in a while, I have a special guest on here. And... Uh, this is one of these days. This is a, a gentleman from the Midwest, from a red state. Yes. Then I'm going to reach across my blue state, being Massachusetts. You are uh, Kentucky? I know, uh, Indiana. Indiana. You know what's so funny? It's like <laughs> Massachusetts. Jim Gaffigan, everybody. How are you? How this are is you? the whitest podcast this is, ever. This is like, I mean, we might we should be shooting this in Charlottesville. <laughs> this is like... <laughs> <laughs> this is like a meeting. The three percenters would have the exact same podcast as this. Not that I. Knew I actually it. think uh, white supremacists would maybe leave their group if they watched. Like, yeah, they'd be like, not that white. Yeah, not that white. They're like, we, we, you know. Yeah. Every once in a while, we like to listen I mean, to the Jackson the, Five. <laughs> some of the <laughs> before we kill somebody. I mean, by the way, this lighting. I, I I'm not a vain man, but li this lighting's pretty. I I'm not even this white. Yeah. Over, we, we, we decided we were going to enhance it with some overhead light, nice track lighting. Yeah. For the pigmentless. Yeah. What is what is your nationality background? How how far into Northern Europe are you? I uh, it's the North Pole. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm I'm all Irish. Uh, what oh, are you? you? Are? And uh, yeah, ninety nine point whatever Irish and English. I, I never did on, the twenty three and Meek, just in case you're related to Aaron talk. Burr. I'm not. I mean, I have the same last name, but I'm not, unfortunately. You Have you done it? No, but I'm worried that there's a serial killer in my family, and I just don't want to deal there, with that. I had, an, like, uh, I had a relative that was on trial for murder. Oh, yeah? I yeah. mean, yeah, you go far enough back. Yeah, you're going to find one. Either someone went on trial or they did something. So what, So wait a minute. So Just never got you don't, caught. I've never... So like, I'm German-Irish. You're German-Irish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, that's what, you know, like when you introduced me, you know, Indiana, Red State, I'm like, when I started touring, I was shocked at how, when I would go around and do Boston radio, how they all were like on, they were big W fans. And I'm like, isn't Massachusetts supposed to be, li they were like. Well, Massachusetts is the weirdest liberal, they're liberal in that, I think that they, you know, union, fucking state job. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But everyone, listen, I mean, I'm going back 27 years, so I can't talk about Massachusetts now because I, I don't know what it's like now. But when I right. was there, it had this weird thing where it was, I can't even say super racist. It was as racist as anywhere else yeah. is what I'm finding when I'm out there. Um, we just had like uh, the busing thing so that it just glommed onto us.
Right. And they act like, you know, upstate New York is just welcoming everybody with open arms. But the second you get into Western Massachusetts, it's all these evil white people. And I just having done the road and talking to people afterwards. Yeah, I just reminded me of a gig I did a long time ago. First time I went into New York, this guy uh, I was head uh, opening for wanted to go water skiing. And it was right after Labor Day and everybody had put their boats away. So he knew that there was going to be wives there. So if he made them laugh, he could talk them in. So he was on, just said, man, I love water skiing. And, just, and he was killing. He just kept saying yeah. how he loved water skiing. So sure enough, some wife took the bait. And this guy took his boat out for us, wow. dragged us across the lake. And he had a, you know, he had a great time. We had a great time. We'd go back to his place, finger sandwiches and everything. And he decides to tell a couple of jokes. And it was just like, wow, whoa. Yeah. Where are we? And she's going, oh, come on, stop it. It was just like, you know, uh, two guys walking to a bar, N-word. And it was just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean. W- two yeah. of those. And then we kind of like, we're like, all right, man. <laughs> that, yeah, that's <laughs> the weird. It's like being from the Midwest. Like when I got to New York City, everyone was like, oh, is your, you know, like I tell you, to joke around. It's like. Like, if I would go back to Indiana, it was like, how is everyone at the Klan meeting? You know, like yeah. assuming that it was all. But like, it's everywhere. Yes, it's it is. really you know it's not like uh, this is unique. the white guilt of your own state podcast. Yeah, no, but we're it's, not defending it. It's everywhere, man. You know, everybody's doing it. But it is. You know, there's a great documentary called uh, Civil War that I woke up at like 4 a.m. because I had like three kids, my kids in my bed. What if I say I had three kids in my bed? Yeah, <laughs> I had three kids. I had met them earlier. No. Um, <laughs> And so, Jesus juice. <laughs> and they, uh, but like it talks about how, you know, the North was all about freeing the slaves, and then the slaves were freed, and there was the Great Migration, and the North was like, wait a minute, right? Do you know what I mean? It changed the whole. I, don't know. I think they were always like that, and they just acted like my. Actually, my actually have a theory that the reason why the people in the South, or whatever they're doing, the tomahawk chop, yeah. and have no empathy, is because Northern whites have not shown them empathy since before the Civil War. Always were acting like they were dumber and all of this type of stuff. And to this day, like talk show hosts can do monologue jokes about them fucking their own sister, and everybody's just sitting there laughing. So they've always been treated as less than. So I, I feel like, uh, you know, there's a big phony thing with northern whites acting like, oh, we're, we're the good white people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, definitely. I mean, that was I, mean big, I know you're a piece of shit just like me, you know. I'm very flawed. I'm very flawed. <laughs> I'm very. Well, you know. Yeah, but you have that easy speaking like I'm very flawed. I'm very No, flawed. well, I think it's weird. Uh, y- you know, I've had people like friends peers be like well like they'll curse in front of me and they'll be like sorry to curse in front of you. like i'm like i'm some evangelical like we're in a in a bible study class and i Why, think it's, like a, do you work clean i work relatively clean but right. it's not as if you know me or brian regan don't curse in everyday life it's just different styles of comedy right so i don't know just bringing that up it's all right so bill i what's, curse my brains out you do? Because I don't, I don't know how to write a joke, so I have to scream my way through my act. That's not true at all. But now, wait a minute. So I can show you some tape. Let's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about um, doing specials and when you're so like because we've discussed this before off the air. You do it in two years, two years. I do it when yeah, kind of like when I feel like. Uh, I'm ready to do one. Yeah. And um, I think that that works out the best because if I was to look at like, I remember when like when Louis was putting them out every single year, if yeah. I ever got caught up in that mindset that I have to be able to put them out as fast as he does, uh, like that, I just knew that wouldn't work for me. So I couldn't get like, uh, you know, when you're a young comic, you just say, what, what is this person doing? What are they doing? Right, I, right, I need right. to be doing what all of these people that are yeah. successful are doing. Fortunately, when he started doing that, I was further enough in my career to be like, all you right. You can see your perspective. Yeah, I mean, like I can't, I can't make an act work in a year. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> I can't do that. I mean, that's also like, even when he was doing that, uh, he was also doing an entire television show. It was unbelievable. And writing and editing it. Like, people don't realize, it's like, if you're touring, doing stand-up, 
uh, even, you know, like you act too. It's like if you do some acting projects, that'll take you out of the mix for a month or two. Yeah. But like if you're doing a show and you're, you know, it's just an insane problem. So like that's like what Louis was doing was kind of otherworldly. But like yeah. I do feel like. Well, that's why I'm saying. So if I was to look, I was just looking at the stand up aspect to forget yeah. about. Yeah, writing a whole season and doing all and making all those story arcs and everything yeah. work and dealing with no, network notes and deadlines and blah blah yeah. and then doing the press just for the friggin' show. The fact that he was still knocking out these hours, yeah, I'm glad I also didn't add that because then I'd be like, wow, man, I knew I sucked, but Jesus, right, right. <laughs> but I also think it's one of those things where um, whatever, like the norm keeps shifting. Like right. the norm was like you know. Leary did that one special and it was like boom and it right. was there was an expectation he never had to do another one I think he did do another one but locked and loaded it was, it's, was the one but that one came out like four or five years later and that was fine and it was it wasn't hey man where's your yeah. neck because people do that where's your next no, one yeah where's your next so one? it's it shifts and it's 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 shifting and also the streaming platform stuff changes constantly you know so and you've only done Netflix. Because yeah. you stay where daddy tells you to stay. Oh, I'm joking. No, I see where <laughs> no, this I'm is going. I know no, where no, this no, is going. No, no, no. I know where this is going. I've had a great run in Netflix. No, Netflix. Look, I'm back at Netflix. Oh, you are back? Yeah, I yeah. thought you were still over there with your side chick, Amazon. No, <laughs> no. Look, ne Netflix is... <laughs> this is going to be a Netflix bashing. No, no, no. I mean, not at all. My Why God. don't you come over to Amazon? What, no, are you no, scared? No, no, no. I was waiting for that. <laughs> no, it is... Uh, that's not it at all. It is it is interesting to see the different platforms, but nobody can compete with Netflix. Nobody... It's like... But that being said, you know, three years, five years, things can change. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's no kind one, of what people no, used to laugh at Netflix. I yeah. remember when I first, my th I always tell the story. When my first special got on Netflix, I had people say you can, you might might have seen his special on Netflix, and people would snicker, really, because they were considered the the, the blockbuster that delivers, right? And and people hadn't caught on to what they were doing yet. But every single like, who would have thought when we started out in this business that NBC, CBS, and ABC would be clamoring for eyeballs? So everybody, everybody has their run. Everybody has their run, and you, you just kind of you get in with whoever you fit in with, and uh, you save your money. You stay away from the yeah. crack, you know? The crack. You try and stay, you stay away, away from, from the, the crack. crack. You get eight hours sleep. Try and get eight hours yeah. sleep. I'm a big you, napper. Uh, you know what? I, I gave into naps in my early 30s, and then I got away from them for the last 20 years. I don't know why. I remember when I was still living with Bobby Kelly. Yeah. We'd be, we had a railroad apartment, and I would literally walk to the middle room between the roommate's name who was on the lease, and Bobby slept in the living room, and I would just go, all right, dude, I'm going to lay down for a minute. And he would do it too, and he would be out there, and then we'd wake up just like a half hour later. Yeah. And he was like, dude, you always call the naps, bro. You know, you're <laughs> calling the naps. And it was just like, and we'd go down to the cellar, and we'd, we'd like have that extra energy. So I'm trying to get back into that because I got back into therapy and my therapist was talking to me she goes you look tired <laughs> I was just like eh. well you gotta peek at night you, you know it's bad yawning night. during your therapy that's not good yeah, are man. you getting sleep yeah no no I'm not how did you know it was the right therapist uh, had you been with her before no, I, I'd been through a number of them, and they were all good, but and I was you also killed like, all the other ones. No, I just, I, yeah, you know, I was in my what about Bob years where I just, I, I wasn't like, you know, receptive to whatever was going to happen or what I, I, you know, so, uh, yeah, I ended up taking some mushrooms that kind of, I was like, wow, okay, that's who I am. Figured out who I was, and that was right when I started therapy again. So then I kind of had this really big breakthrough thing. And now I feel like it's kind of starting to slow down again. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it just means I got to take more drugs. So it's the <laughs> shrooms open. What did you learn in the shrooms? I, I abbreviated. I kind of, I kind of, yeah. Well, you're, you're cool. You know? I'm just cutting edge. Yeah. 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 You're from the farmlands. You I'm guys from the farmlands. To... <laughs> so we don't have time to say mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just, I had a bad trip. 
But yeah. it was a good trip because I kind of saw all of this stuff that everything was sitting on. And at first I thought it was my current life. I was like, oh, this goes all the way back to childhood. I got to figure out what this is. I need to be sober because I'd already quit drinking. But yeah. Then I kind of replaced that with gummies and weed yeah. and shit. Yeah. And then I was like, so I mean, I took that, uh, that little trip there and I didn't even smoke a cigar. It was in February. I didn't even smoke a cigar till like May. Wow. And I just went like, I was like, I just figured out who the fuck I was for the first time. I was 52, almost 53. So, And w when you say you figured out who you were. Why I do stand up, why every good thing I did, every bad thing I did, every person that I hurt. And every what person, is that? Huh? What is that? What is it? You what want to get it? into that? Yeah, I want to get... Well, 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 All right, I do stand up because it's literally the fucking six-year-old me going... If I go, I'm going to go into this room with all of these strangers. I'm going to make them laugh. They're going to like me, and then no one's going to hurt me. That is literally all the way down to the, to the brass tacks of who the fuck I am. It's I do this shit, so you will like me, and you won't hurt me. Yeah, I mean, it is... So then... There's the I made thing. I yeah. made the mistake of thinking that I was going to be get great as a comedian, and then everything else in my life was going to fall into place. And what right. ended up happening was my by my mid thirties, I I I progressed as a comedian, and everything else was at the starting line. I mean, I was sleeping on a futon. I wasn't in a relationship, no yeah. kids. I had you know I had nothing going on, but I had this one thing that I knew how to do because this was the only thing that I I. I Worked out, but I also, you know, I understood why I drank the way I did, why I couldn't just have a drink, you know, yeah. that I, why I had to fucking rage, why I have like this, this lunacy in me. So let me ask you this nature versus nurture. Are you a result of your upbringing, your family, or is it just kind of who you are? Uh, mainly my upbringing, and then I would say, also, it's it's a combination of both. 65, 35? Oh, no, dude. I would say, yeah, I don't want to get 80. into it. You don't want to get it? I mean, it's, I, interesting yeah, it's a high like, number, dude. It's a fucking high number because I'm kind of now like, uh, like now looking back on yeah. all of it. And it's like the sort of the end of the usual suspects where the leg straightens out. Oh, like, oh, what the fuck? Like, yeah. I, the, the, I, end of the bottom I was of being, the coffee cup. <laughs> yeah, I was being fed all like I believed it was this. And now I realize it was that, and it was fucking mind blowing, mind blowing. Wow. I actually wrecked my car. I sideswiped a fucking mail truck. Were you in, you were when you were on mushrooms? No. Oh. Just the clarity of oh oh. I mean, I'm not going to get into this shit, yeah. you know. But yeah. like, and the you know, guy was parked on the side of the road. I was driving like two miles an hour, and they got those big fucking honey of a ham bumpers that stick out. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it caught my front quarter panel and just went <laughs> right down the side. Cost me like fucking seven grand. It was oh, just Jesus. everything. Two new doors, the whole fucking thing. Whatever. I don't get into that. But I know who I am. <laughs> and isn't it... What, talk about an incredible luxury. I mean, obviously, there's the fulfillment of stand-up. But, like, I believe, independent of the work you've done, that stand-up, the conversation you have with the audience, it holds up a mirror. Like, the you know, you'd think that, like... What we say to an audience, they're not, they're laughing, they're per contributing by not laughing or laughing or booing or clapping. But there's a lot of communication going on. And I think comedians learn a lot about themselves from how an audience reacts, whether it's in a small club or even in a big one. You say something and it comes across. Right. And but it also has to be like how aware or open you are, receptive you are. But even then, you kind of like, you're skimming the surface so like uh, at least I was I'm probably superimposing who I was before all this this shit uh, recent things that I did so um, you know my whole thing was just trying to make people laugh have a good set and then get to the next level of yeah. the business so yeah, there, there was, it, it was really just sort of like then I do this, then I then, then I get at Caroline's, and I'm in at New York, and then yeah, I yeah, do yeah. this, and I go out to <laughs> yeah. LA and get an agent, blah, blah, blah. But it was yeah. just all like, uh, yeah, it was nothing. I kind of learned that uh, achieving isn't living. <laughs> like, living is living. Yeah, no, I remember I uh, finally got Letterman, and uh, like, I, you know, it was great, and it had been a goal of mine from the beginning, and I was, but like, there was part of me like, oh, well, well, what do I do now? Like I, <laughs> like I didn't like. That's all I wanted was to 
do a set on Letterman, you know, sure it was good because when people are like, people used to ask if you were a comedian, have you been on Letterman or yeah. The Tonight Show? And so, but it is weird because you don't really think beyond these, or I didn't think beyond these immediate goals, which are kind of f false. It's like, even it goes back to like, the mentality of when you're in high school and you're like, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm captain of the football team. There you go. Did it. Yeah. Like, you don't realize. <laughs> that, that, would, means, that would be pretty awesome. That you don't realize that it's, once you're out of high school, it, it's irrelevant. Do you know what I mean? It's like I played sports all my life and then I, you know, but I mostly get cast as like victims. You know, I know, but don't guys. you? But there's there's a thing though. I think with like sports though is if you play organized sports, there is something that you learn in there that really isn't talked about now because everything's just considered like so much of sports now is considered like male toxicity. Like how you learn, how you know you learn your role, where you fit in, how to bring people up, and not I be a negative force. You learn to how to lose, how to come back from losing. Um, you learn how to lead how to learn you learn all of this amazing stuff and so i think being captain of the football team means you had some sort of leadership qualities i mean you watch these fucking hollywood yeah. movies and it's just me oh he's the best looking guy and he's a douche yeah, yeah, yeah. and he treats the cheerleader he's dating like yeah, shit yeah. i mean that's all written from nerds yeah who didn't play yeah for the most part i think um yeah. or you know never talk to the cheerleader so I mean, they, they it, resent them so they, they just kind of create this like when we were growing up like, they used to write shows about guys, guys. And then somewhere along the line, it just became this making fun of guys, guys, which needed to be done because it really got ridiculous with yeah, a yeah. lot of those action movies and yeah. shit. But, like, then it just kind of went to such a level that it's like, wait, but the guys, guy does exist. Yeah. There is that guy who is just confident and better looking than you and tougher than you and is going to get a better looking girlfriend than you. And you have to fucking accept that. It's, he doesn't always have an underlying just insecurity. Just because he's a good athlete doesn't mean he's not smart. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like that's – but some of that's John Hughes. Like the, when they attacked John Hughes cliches of like, um, you know, the sexism, they didn't address all these other things. But – um, yeah, no, I think, uh, let me tell you the story. So I brought my 10-year-old. I love John Hughes. Yeah. I, I brought my 10-year-old to a Knicks game, which was amazing. I had gone with my 9-year-old, and um, and we, were, we had great seats. And um, at one point, and by the way, this is, you know, 10-year-olds, they're not great sports. You know, like when you play them, like I'll play him in soccer and basketball. And if he's winning by just one point, he just starts giving me shit. <laughs> but we were at this basketball game, and he was like, he was like, there's a lot of poor sports here. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, a lot of these people are just like, you know, because people are rooting for their team and kind right. of like giving shit. And I was like, wow, I didn't even realize that. So like <laughs> along with that leadership. <laughs> but then again, that's not my that's not my. Mo like I in went in defense to, of Knicks fans. They haven't won since '73, so but even, you, you're, you're going to hear some heckles. I remember I did a commercial for um, this bank that had No Mar and Derek Jeter, and we shot in between a doubleheader, and then after we shot, we went and watched the sec the second game, and uh, we were in a box seat, and there was a guy in the you know like up in one of those fancy uh, lounges yelling obscenities to the Yankees. This is back before Boston had won. Right. You know, and he was standing next to a kid who was saying the same thing. You know, fuck you, Yankees suck. You know, right. and it was just, so, it's like they can't hear you. Like there's that. And they also like, they block it out. Like I actually think like an NBA player, if everyone was, when they went to take a foul shot, yeah. Like part of a foul shot is everybody screaming and yelling and a, and a mascot moonwalking along the baseline. I think if everyone was just actually quiet and respectful. It would throw them. Yeah, that would wrap. Yeah. Because I think after a while, every time you take a foul shot, there's a bunch of people with those stupid Yeah, no, things. those things, it's, it's they just, just turn into a blur. I know. And also, you know what those things, too? They're made out of plastic, and evidently all plastic shit lasts for like 800 to 1,000 years. Yeah. So just to try to rattle this guy for game 47 of the NBA season, those stupid things are going to float in the ocean for a fucking thousand years. <laughs> oh, that was depressing. Right, Sorry. So nature and nurture. So you're, 
I, I believe like you, I think nature or nurture works. I think you can get a better sense of that if you have some sort of a more like less volatile childhood or time that you grew up in. Because I mean, I don't resent, you know, the shit that happened to me when I was growing up. It was yeah. a fucking crazy time. It was crazy. It was a crazy time. You know, we were coming out of the 60s. All of these people had gotten whacked. I mean, basically, I think the, the statement of the 60s was do what we say or it doesn't matter, black, white, male, female, you're going to, you know, a, a convenient lone gunman is going to take you out. Uh, Vietnam War ended, the gas shortage and all of that, the fucking rust belt, everything was falling apart. Car- Carter was a very interesting thing. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, he's the I'm only human being. He's the only human being I feel like that's been president since and, and, and I think the proof's in the pudding. All these other fucking assholes, what do they do? They go off, they do the speech tour, and they buy a mansion on Martha's Vineyard. This guy won a Pulitzer it, Prize. Then he goes and builds after, houses. After he was yeah. president, he's still building homes for the homeless in the 90s. This guy is truly a public servant. Those other guys, they're eating fucking, you know, lobster and steak every yeah. fucking night. I know, because I've been on the internet. Yeah, well, I also, I, I mean, look, I'd eat the lobster and steak, too. I can't eat lobster. You can't. I, I just don't like the... Why can't they kill them right before they put them in the pot? Do they have to boil them alive? Well, I think it's illegal to boil them alive now. In it's some what? states. In some states. It's I saw what? That. To, to boil them alive. Is illegal? It's illegal to do it. They have to kill them first. And I guarantee you that will be politicized. I'm sh- Well, I don't know what state it is. Do you, do you kill your England. lobster first? Did you well, vote for Hillary? During the lockdown... Do you boil it alive? You're a Trumpster. Well, the uh, we were sent uh, some lobsters from Made Lobster something company, and I did it with my two youngest, and and they did you know put them in there, and you hear them scream, and and my my youngest was like like pissed at me for like a week, because you do hear like yeah they say that they used like to say that's the puppy. air air coming out of the shell, and it's like no it isn't <laughs> no it's not. Oh, uh, God. Why, why? Fucking humans are the worst. We are the fucking worst. Well, as long as we don't... But it's like, you know, I love a steak, but, you know, I never look yeah, at it. Yeah, but they cow. fucking kill the thing. Yeah. They don't throw the Beforehand. cow or the steer on the fucking... <laughs> in the background. All right. It's Simply Safe, everybody. You know, if you ever wanted to make your home feel safer, I need a safe space, you guys. There's no better time than now. Sorry, I just woke up. Sorry about the sound of my voice, all right? You do five fucking shows in Indianapolis. Um, this week, my friends at Simply Safe are giving my listeners early access to all their holiday deals, 40% off their award winning home security. I love Simply Safe because it has everything you need to make your home safe indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, no feminists all monitored around the clock by trained professionals who set up who helped set it up the instant you need it. Simply Safe was even named the best home security system of 2021 by US News and World Report. You can easily customize a system at your house online in minutes and even get free custom recommendations from Simply Safe. These are Simply Safe's biggest discounts of the year. You can get a complete home security system starting at just over hundred dollars, one hundred big ones, um, no hundred bucks. Sorry, uh, there are no long term contracts or commitments. It's really easy. It's a really easy way to start feeling a bit more peace of mind. Take advantage of Simply Safe holiday deals and get forty percent off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com. slash burr. Again, that's S I M P L I. S-A-F-E dot com slash Burr uh, for 40% off your entire system. All right, lastly but not leastly, it's Solo Stove. Dude, uh, there's nothing quite like the feeling of gathering around a warm fire on a cool evening. And a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stoves makes your outdoor moments even more memorable. Because instead of having to constantly dodge campfire fumes, you can sit back, relax, and then actually... Enjoy the fire. I want to give this to a homeless encampment. Now then they probably fight each other over. And with Solo Stove's holiday sale, you can get a great deal on a Solo Stove fire pit. Solo Stove fire pits are brilliantly brilliantly engineered. Made with premium grade 304 stainless steel. 
Whatever the hell that is, it sounds impressive. It almost went around the whole way. And a 360-degree airflow system that maximizes efficiency while minimizing the smoke. That's the best right there. No smoke in your face. Easy to light with a few bits of starter. Your fire is blazing in minutes. Perfectly portable. Take solo stove with you on camping trips and more. Let the, gri- the gifting begin. Solo st- shop solo stoves holiday sale for huge site-wide savings now through the end of the year and get $10 off with the promo code BURR plus a lifetime warranty and a free, th- a free 30-day returns. Get an extra $10 off holiday deals at solostove.com promo code BURR. S-O-L-O-S-T-O-V-E dot com promo code BURR. Yeah. But I haven't said that. You know, like, nature is so fucking brutal. Like, there was these two stray kittens that were coming into our yard, and I couldn't coax them in. They wouldn't trust, so we'd leave out food. And it took me three days, and I was starting to gain their trust. And the sun went down. I heard a horrific noise, and I haven't heard seen them since. And so that's probably, like, a coyote? A coyote probably killed them, or a raccoon, or another fucking cat. And they don't give a fuck how cute those things are. All they see is vulnerability, and it's just like... And it's just been, it's been fucking me up the whole week going, what could I have done to got the goddamn things in the house? My wife's allergic to fucking cats. I was trying oh, to yeah. get them to go downstairs. I mean, you know, I got little kids. They're yeah. not to claw. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, yeah. I have no fucking idea. And then I'm thinking, who are the fucking people that just let these things go? I'm hoping maybe somebody in the neighborhood got them. And then they just put a noisemaker there to make it sound like they were killed. Well, dude, I hear noise outside those, my those, house all those. the time. I heard one night, I think it was a coyote and a raccoon going at it. And really? It, it, dude, it was like, it was fucking, it was like the, that, that, the first UFC before it was the UFC when you could punch in the balls and gouge eyes and stuff. That's what it sounded like was going on outside. Just blood curdling. And don't yeah. you have, do you have, do you still have your dog? No, my, my dog, I gave away my dog right before my daughter was born because it was just aggressive. And she ended up yeah. beating my daughter and growled at my daughter. So I was just like, yeah, so yeah. my dog, uh, my owner, my owner, my trainer took it. I was still the owner. Um, it was a weird sort of setup there. I was still the owner, but he had it for like the last uh, almost five years. And she just passed away of uh, congestive heart failure. Wow. Uh, but you know, I but used she to, had a good run. She had a great run. She, Thirteen yeah. years, a pit bull that's aggressive towards people. They usually get put down within the first year, year and a half. I would think this thing lasted for thirteen years, and um, he used, you know, my trainer, you know, would send me all this great video. Lived out in Arizona, show me all this great video. Her rolling around the grass, having a great time. And when he would come out to L.A., he'd always bring her, and I'd see her. So every month or two, I get wow. to take her on a hike, and. Um, you know, but I, I cried when we gave her away. But like by then, it was like five years had gone by, and also when she growled at my daughter, no, no, I, no, I, I knew yeah. I was like, okay, I made the uh, yeah, yeah, right no, decision. That's the right decision. Yeah, I still love that fucking dog. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. They're just they don't complain. They don't do anything. They're just there. They're ready to uh, go. You know, pit bulls are awesome. I mean, I, we had a crazy one. I mean, it was literally like, uh, you know. My trainer said, you know, this is one of these dogs nature said no to, but some person said yes to because the thing was fucking nuts. It yeah. was nuts. But I'm not down on the breed whatsoever because I, yeah. I love those dogs. I love pit bulls. Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, it's like anything. You know, you, you get a lemon every once in a while. Yeah. My whole <laughs> – I feel like my body's a lemon. Yeah. Um, do you I mean, do I anything? I, I literally, right before I came here, I went to the heart doctor. I've you had did? A, I, yeah, I've had a couple of buddies of mine, you know, Die of heart attacks. One guy was a little bigger. Another guy would just look like me. I, and just had like at the widow maker thing? Uh, yeah, or something really? like that. I don't know what. So I've been going every year. You know, old dad, I got to get my ticker checked out. So yeah. I, I do that. And, uh, you know, I try to keep my weight down and that type of shit. I don't know. Well, you know, like the, let's talk about the weight down. Like, they're, like I tour. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll tell the name. Todd Glass. I, I tour with Todd Glass. I love Todd Glass. Todd's one of the funniest comics ever. He fucking, ever. he eats, I tour with him. We go out to dinner after the show. He'll eat twice as much as me. Twice as much as me. Yeah, but he probably works out. No, I work out too. I work out, you don't believe me at all. I work out some. I, I worked, all right, look at what, these. walking to the microphone and no, walking off stage? no, no. <laughs> Oh my God! This is when you know you don't work out when you take pictures of yourself working no, out. No, you an Instagram I'm model. Taking, I'm not taking pictures. I'm showing you that this. All right, that's 
All right, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Hold on. Well, he has some sort of app out here. Look at this. That is graphing something. Okay. These are, look at these. What are those? These are my fitness rings. How many are closed? All of them? What does closed mean? Closed means that... What does it mean? 76 minutes exercising. 974. Wait, but what, does this thing actually watch you exercising? You're just no, walking just, it, around. No, this is me exercising. So look. What are you doing when elliptical, you're Elliptical, yoga. I mean... It, Look. Yeah, but what? How does this thing know if you just said I just did a half hour of yoga? It, it, how does it, it measures your heart rate? How does it know? It measures your heart rate. You don't believe me at all. I don't think that you just fucking worked out two hundred days in a row. No, I don't. I did. I did. I don't look at right you now. You just fucking said I did twice, and both times you averted your eyes. You go. I did. I did. I did. I, did. I worked right. out. Well, I can tell you dropped weight. I'm not trying I mean, to bring no, you down. No, well, I'm not trying to bring you down or nothing like no, that. No, but I'm just, I'm saying, just saying that half like half your there fucking is, act is about how you just like eating cookies. No, and yeah, shit. I know, but like <laughs> no, but like half of <laughs> why did I just tell you what your act's about? Oh, but, is that what it's about, Bill? Sorry, I'm on but, autopilot. No, but like the uh, but my point is, and I'm not saying I have a condition where I gain weight. I'm not talking. I have big bones. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that some no, you people... Got, you got that farmer built. No, but yeah, that's the thing, you're, you're is that people. some people... <laughs> like, like, was your dad fat? Was your mom fat? No. Genetically, you're thin. Are you asking me that? Yes. Oh, yeah, no. You don't even know what you're talking about. I don't I know. Have, I have to fucking eat borderline... I'm 53. I can eat borderline perfectly and work out, and I still gain like five fucking... I can go to gym 10 days in a row, have one douche of a day, and I'll gain like three fucking pounds. It's brutal. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I work on it. So don't fucking you, you fucking, um, all you big you bone guys. you be angry about All nothing? you fucking big bone guys. Um, I'm not angry about but, nothing. Uh, no, I'm not really angry about this. It's about that shit from before. So I'm already idling is, at an eight. It is. Listen. Yeah. All of you guys do that shit. What's that? You guys who are out of shape, see someone who's in better shape and go, oh, dude, yeah, you can fucking... Women do that. I understand I mean, guys how it sounds like Women that. say guys just think about losing weight and they le lose weight. That's actually like a catchphrase among women. I understand that. But what I'm saying is that I... Here, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up here. Oh, dude, fuck those nerd, things. Nerd, 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 All nerd. these things. Like, oh, look, Let me my, show you this. my watch said I took 10,000 steps My watch steps said today. I did. My watch said I did. Look at this. Look at those sneakers. You don't work out. What, what those are these? fucking look at those these, fucking I, things. I got these for my special. I didn't buy these. Jesus. Like by the way, I don't buy clothes. Look at this. I still got this fucking thing going on. No, but all right. Let me ask you this: your your mom and dad thin or not? Uh, my, no, my dad's not thin. No. Your dad was all right. So when you worked in his office, thin or not? So when he was in no. his fifties, no, no, he was one of those guys who was thin, and then then metabolism slow, catches up, catches up, and then he wasn't thin. I just uh, but this whole are... idea that you just oh you just rail thin in your fifties and you can fucking eat moon pies it's it's not true. There's there's some people like I have a friend who I went to college with who's like this big. She's I mean she's Asian but like she eats like fucking boatloads. You don't buy it. Simple math, dude. You got to if you consume. But wait a minute. Wait if a you minute. consume more calories than you burn. I'm not saying that. Some people's that. idol is higher, but this idea that there's people out there that well into their 50s and 60s can be eating five, six thousand calories and what, and still eat like they're a sophomore in college and aren't fat. I don't bullshit. disagree with that at all. But are you saying I don't that, know what you're saying. Are you saying that like Rob Lowe doesn't have a genetic advantage? Now, what are we talking about? I'm like, talking about like Women? he's compared Rob to us? Lowe yeah. is like 80 years old and he looks like he's 30. When we were little kids, Rob Lowe was like 40. Rob Lowe was a god. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's my point. My point is. Full is, head of hair. <laughs> right? It's not You know right. something? I think and God tried with him. Yeah. Where he slapped us together. He actually tried with See, Rob what Lowe. I, that's he, what I'm and saying. And he takes care of Rob Lowe. Like like a classic car. Do you think Rob Lowe is like sleeping in er, er, uh, oxygen tanks every night? No, he I has. Think, a, no, he works his ass off. I don't know. I, I, think, I think he I think does. You're, I think you're a hater. Uh, no, I'm you're not a, a hater. hater. You're a Jim hater. I'm coining a phrase. Jim hater. A Jim hater. Jim hater. Don't no. 
Jim Gaffigan, Jim Hayden. I'm not. Well, look, <laughs> the, the point is, it's like, also, there's a difference between like. Uh, I know. bet he has all of his meals like un, like he knows what he's going to eat. And they come in those little glass uh, Tupperware things and he sits and somebody brings them and then he eats you know, it. Like, it's like, but here's the thing. That's it's what like, I would think. So do you th- like, look, there's a difference between like, like Tom Brady, like, you know, there's a rumor that he, he, he doesn't eat bread or he hasn't eaten bread in like a decade or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like the whole cheat meal thing, like. There is the difference between, like, so do you well, eat? most people, when they do a cheat meal, they do the whole day. Yeah. They, they go, oh, this is my cheat day. It's not a cheat <laughs> day. It's a cheat meal. And so do you do the, do you have a trainer? No. It's harder to eat healthy when you have little kids, right? And they, they're having uh, their meal and you're like sitting there going, here, finish your. Yeah. And then you don't want to throw out yeah. the food. Yeah, yeah, I have that. Like my kids, they like pancakes and waffles. They would yeah. eat that literally every single day they get excited they're rocking back and yeah. forth and i'm literally doing the cosby bit dad is great yeah, Give us yeah, chocolate yeah cake and i just do it and then when they don't finish something you're like this you know i'm like i'm not throwing this out so then you know but um uh, but there's times when you have more discipline than others yeah right right now i'm in a disciplined time because i i just i've had it with myself so i gotta right. i gotta drop these these you know i put on like 20 during covid so i'm trying to take off I, i'm I got like another 10 I got to take off. And do you run? No. God, no. Wh- wh- Why wh- would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I would I, I, don't know, I would just... run if someone was chasing me, but I'm not going to wear out my knees before the axe murderer gets there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. My knees people. don't even work anymore, by the way. But no. I think some of that is... Look, I talked to Rogan during the pandemic because uh, I... No, I talked to him and I said, I texted with him. I'm like, look, I want to lose weight. And he said, cut out sugar, cut out bread. And I did lose weight. Mm -hmm. And so, and by the way, you cut out sugar, you cut out bread. It's like your joints hurt less. But Mm -hmm. after a while, you're like, what am I living for? Do you know what I mean? Your family, you know, but yeah. (laughs) I mean, my sure, kids. There, my I, kids. I got to be honest with you. When I cut out sugar, yeah. When I look at desserts, it doesn't even look like it's edible. It looks like clown food, like something like clowns yeah. would eat, and they'd never have to put makeup on. Like just with all of the wild colors, the creams, and all of that shit, it just looks it looks stupid to me. Um, and by the way, I think it's you know this is totally a cop out and an excuse, but I feel like when you're traveling, when you're touring. I find it harder to eat healthy too because it's like if you're going out to eat first of all we know every restaurant you know a key ingredient is butter and everything but so you can eat healthy don't you find it depressing you're like oh you know what oh after my show I'm gonna go and have this Tupperware in my hotel room like how do you unwind you have a cigar and you have a meal right um no, I, I find the frustrating thing about touring is that uh, you, you always have to be on like the first flight out because it's like, this is a show day. What if something happens? It's like they yeah, have yeah, yeah. forecasts. Yeah. And if it's fucking clear, I can leave it and it just doesn't happen. You got to fucking get up at the fucking crack of dawn. And then what happens is then you run down. You just did a show. You were wired from the show. You couldn't go to yeah. sleep. And then you got to wake up at 6 in the morning to get to the fucking airport. And then what I've learned is when I land, I'm going to work out. If I do that, I'm already so run down, breathing all this shit in. I'm going to go down to the gym, hotel gym, and I'm going to get sick. So then what happens is I don't do it. And then I'm missing my kids and I'm frustrated. And that's usually when I'll order the burger. Yeah. So, um, but I, I mean, yeah. So I think we're agreeing on a lot of stuff. But I'm not agreeing with like this whole, you know. This this whole I know this guy. This is guy. No, yeah, all right. I, the guy but eats a, minute, a whole a fucking bison I'm with not, whipped cream I'm not, on it, and he doesn't. <laughs> he, I'm not he saying doesn't even, that. I'm saying that there it's are. It's Todd Glass under the bus. I mean, he's uh, yeah. a, a beloved comedian. He's beloved by everyone. He's I love him, and but like what I would say is that look, there there are different body Dude, types. You, your body type, you could get absolutely fucking jacked. 
fucking yoked. Look at you, dude. You got those farmers. You were throwing bales of hay at three years of age no, out there in Indiana. No. Dude, you could get... No. You look like... You know what you look like? You look like one of those fucking guys on the strongman things. You uh, yeah, see on ESPN. Those, uh, yeah, those guys are all from like uh, Jans, the Faroe Islands. Hans or whatever. Yeah. No, I... Uh, no, I, I'm just saying that there is, just, you know, we were talking about the heart thing. <laughs> Your knees all taped up with those big pasty thighs, picking <laughs> up those fucking picking up rocks. Those, yeah, those big round balls they <laughs> sent down. Dragging an 18 wheeler. No. I love it. You're one of the strongest guys <laughs> in the world, and now we're going to destroy your body. <laughs> <laughs> Pull this train. Well, it's like, what's so fascinating is they're all from the Faroe Islands. They're from Iceland and the Faroe Islands. It's like nothing to do with these places, so they lift weights. But my point is that there are differences. You know, there are differences. I'm not saying that, like, people that eat unhealthy aren't going to gain weight. I'm not saying that, like, if I, if I ate like I ate when during the lockdown, I would be uh, much thinner. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying that, like, you know, there are people that have different metabolisms. I'm not saying that I don't eat unhealthy. All right. That's well, what but I, think I, I But saying. if you just said that in the beginning. Yeah. Rather than throwing the great Todd Glass under the I'm bus. I'm not saying I don't this, have. This guy can fucking I also, eat anything. He can. Huh? It's, it's. He can't. He, believe me, he can. Not without working out. You just, you have to. And not at his age. You can't. It's, I'm telling you, I, I, I saying, bet you can't handle Todd Glass's workout. I bet you couldn't handle it. That's obviously not true. Like, I mean, you know, like, yeah, I can totally handle his workout. How do you You're know? You're talking about Todd Glass's workout like it's like like it's like it's he's a UFC fighter. If he's you can't eating, handle the Todd Glass but if workout. He's eating, but I'm going off of your information. Yeah. If he's eating the way you're saying he's eating. Well, this guy fucking, he goes to steak and shake. He fucking eats anything. If he's doing that and he's in the shape he's in, that fucking guy works out like an animal. At his age. I Well, I know for a fact he does the elliptical. And it's, you know. What? What's wrong with the elliptical? Uh, there it is. What? He works out. Yeah. Okay. And he also, I bet, doesn't eat anything. Maybe he was on the road. He says, fuck it. I'll eat like an animal. Yeah. But I bet when he, he eats clean when he's in L.A. You with your myths. It's all about superstition. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's, I have this theory that most comedians. I was thinking, you know, when I fucked up in high school, I never said to smart kids, just like, dude, you don't even have to study. I mean, you just look at a book and you know everything in it. Like, that's what out of shape people do to in shape people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I remember. They don't want to hear that you actually have to work. Well, by the way, I say that to my kids. You're terrible people. You know, like, uh, like all those kids at school that say they don't study, they're lying. You know. All right. They're just as dumb as you are, son. No, that it, because that is the. It's just like you know you do it. You go into a, uh, you know, it's kind of like comedy. It's when you see someone do a show, it it gives the appearance that they're just making it up, but of course we know that there's work that goes into that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, there is also catching a zone and going off. There are those things, you know. You tap yeah. into the rage. Some people are born with it, but it's all about the work. What if I drew this great you, know what do? you don't even have to. You I mean, you just walk on stage and people start laughing. I mean, you don't even have to work at it. That's a nonsense. You just, you have like this high comedy metabolism. High comedy metabolism. metabolism. The jokes just, they just hit the page. It all works. They, they write themselves. So what, um, so is all things comedy, is this, what is the, um, I mean, I, I, you know, I love it. You're looking at me like I'm going to shit on it. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I just, well, I've never understood the confusion about it. It was a podcast network that now turned into a production company. Ah, there yeah. you go. Well, I don't know It's pretty anything. straightforward. We've sold shows. It's been in the trades. So yeah. They're no. acting like, you know. I'm not. See, you assume. I mean, I, I know you got, you know, nominated for a fucking Cable Ace Award. I knew that. Cable Ace Cable Award. Cable Ace Award, man. Remember those? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That was that was the that was the basic cable Emmy, because yeah. the Emmys would not acknowledge cable. And now, the I always like how they do that, Emmys like how like, you know, those award dominated. shows, they yeah. act like whatever the new platform is gets treated like the the latest immigrants to the country, and they just get <laughs> shunned. Yeah, like you you're not real television. This is real television. I love it when there's shows that are completely ignored by uh, shows, movies, everything. 
like the, the they miss the whole thing and then they're embraced as brilliant like the wire like the wire never cleaned up at those uh awards oh, yeah. things or like when they they f- just keep not giving somebody an award and then in the end they give me either a lifetime achievement award yeah, yeah, yeah. or they give an award for a movie that wasn't nearly as good as their previous yeah. work yeah yeah and it's just like I mean, that's one of those things why I sit there and I watch people like bitch about not getting an award and you just look at like, I'm trying to think of somebody like say Mark, Martin Scorsese. Yeah. How many fucking movies did that guy have to put out before they finally gave it to him for The Departed? But yeah. he doesn't win it for Raging Bull. He doesn't win it yeah. for Taxi Driver. He doesn't win it for fucking uh, 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 Goodfellas. Uh, Casino. You know, I, I just, it's it just, is it, weird. It's just, just, there's only one trophy. Well, it's, I think it's funny that adults get upset that they're not winning a trophy. There's just something so fucking hilarious about that. Like, especially if you were like nominated, there's yeah. just something funny, and you're gonna go there all up, and like somebody else wins it. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's also intellectually, you know, that it's, it, you know, comparing whether it's different movies or different shows is an absurd task. Like, you can't compare this show to that show and say which one was better uh, yeah you know like the, you know like the, that's not it's like which one did you like better or yeah, whatever so, I so just it's think like it's, someone it's, enjoys the sopranos you don't need an award but you do see like that. i understand it for writers though i learned that doing efforts for family as always is if you get nominated and nominated just nominated or won then that can up your fee, you yeah, know, yeah. like I, I yeah, wrote I on an Emmy nominated Emmy Awards. So then it's like, I understood it. But as far as just like the individual, you know, going up there, being upset, it's just fucking, it's just, there's something hilarious about it. Yeah. You know, I understand like racially, if they just cut out your whole race, I get those people, but white people, I guess, basically being like, ah, oh, this, you know, but it is, I can't believe that they chose shows. this over my, they say, dude, but you were there. I tried to do a joke about how. Who cares? Um, how like uh, be, like if you look at most award shows, they're good look. They're all good looking people too. They're all very attractive. They should be. And here's no, but here's how good, how here's how <laughs> I'm a big fan you know, of good looking people and then being treated w- better. But the the good looking people here's how consistently good looking people win awards. When a normal looking person wins an award. You kind of think, wow, they must be really talented because there's such a standard for attractive people winning awards. It's like best. I never think that. You never think that? No, I, I, I usually probably saw what they're nominated for if I'm sitting there watching it. And I'll be like, yeah, or maybe I thought the other person should have won or whatever. But I got to be honest with you, I kind of miss good looking people. What do you mean miss them? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting rid of them. What are you talking They're about? They're putting regular people on billboards. Why don't, you know? why don't you watch British television shows? There's no comparison. Because then they fucking talk too fast, and I can't understand what they're saying. And I, I, I just don't like... like I, I'll watch, like... Uh, I watched the first couple episodes... Um, first see, couple seasons of Peaky Blinders, and then my drinking went off the rails because everybody yeah. was just boozing on there, and I was drinking a yeah. lot then. So I kind of was like, I gotta stop watching this shit. I'll blame the TV show. Yeah, that's that rather, was the reason. Than, that was the number one well, cause of help. most alcoholism. Well, um, me TV. So, <laughs> if you want to quit drinking and smoking, don't watch me TV. What's me TV? Oh my God, what? Me TV. What is that? It's, I don't it's, know. it's fuck. It was it my entertainment? I don't know. It's all the legendary shows we grew oh. up. Heroes and Icons channel. Oh, I don't. Dude, if you want to watch like every episode of fucking Matt, what, are you Lock, retired? How do you know about all these things? Well, what am I gonna watch? Some <laughs> fucking uh, some fucking show about a witch? What? About, I, like whenever they, everything was about vampires and Dracula, I just yeah. was like, I'm too old for now TV. Yeah. And then it just all became like these fucking superhero movies. How many fucking more can they do? Yeah. And they all have the same fucking storyline. Either something radioactive happened to you, or you got fucked up as a kid, or are you from another planet? Yeah. Society doesn't understand you. Oh, all this fucking, oh my God, it's the same fucking story over and over again. Over and fucking over again. It is pretty amazing. The And they have blown out every... Like, I swear to God, like, has Robin gotten his own movie yet? That's oh, like the only guy left. Oh, I'm sure. Let's do a fucking backstory on how he became the ward 
of uh, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> That's what they should do, and they should make him gay like everybody always thought was going on I think on he already there. is gay. All right, so they make him gay, yeah. and then you could at least fucking do that. You bring Harvey yeah. Milk in. You, Sean Penn plays, brings back Harvey Milk. He saves Harvey Milk. He saves Harvey Milk. Like a Tarantino and thing. You Harvey change Milk. history. Instead of the Manson family succeeding, they don't. He saves Harvey Milk. Yeah. I mean, that... And he finally sets out. They get married. He fucking sets out. He gets away from fucking Batman. That toxic relationship. Right. Because he had anger issues, you know, from when he was a kid. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. That's a good fucking movie. That's, you, I'd see you that pitched movie. it. You pitched it right here. Hey, dude, we should write it. What, <laughs> what is, <laughs> it is the superhero. Like, I remember when I was a kid and Star Wars came out, and I was kind of like, all right, this is, this is, uh, you know, I liked it, but I didn't. You know, like I had friends that were like crazy. I had friends that were crazy about the rock band Kiss. I was like, go at it, go have fun. Yeah. And and then, um, but now it's just, it's not even a generation. It's generation upon generation of like, you know, I took my kids to Star Wars movies every Christmas for like five years straight. It's just, there's, it's not just the superheroes. It is like this, uh, it's, you know, it's weird. There's a great book about how... They're always trying to make your kid cry or scare the shit out of him. Like, well, they kill, like, main character. How like, old does your kid have to be? They killed Harrison Ford. My, my daughter's, like, crying. I'm like, it's just a movie. It's but They, they killed Han Solo. Dude, I remember when we saw E.T. when that fucking thing yeah. almost died. Yeah. Something happened in that. I remember one of my siblings was fucking bawling his eyes yeah. out. And I remember just, and we made fun of him, of course, but that's how it was back then. But I just remember now that I have like, like I'm trying to think, how old does my daughter have to be where I could take her to a rated G movie? One of the parents at my daughter's school asked yeah. me, he goes, hey man, I'm taking my daughter. You want to come with me? And I just couldn't make it. And I'm glad I didn't. He goes, oh my God. He goes, they showed some super sad cartoon before with somebody dying and his kid was just bawling <laughs> and I'm like why do they fucking do that yeah. all what they do is they'll come in there and they know that the, the, the movie's so young that there's a bunch of parents there and then they'll advertise the movie to try to get the parents to go there and they'll scare the fucking shit out of your kids showing yeah. some like you know PG-13 rated R shit you know yeah maybe yeah. not rated R no yeah they wouldn't do that yeah I don't know I mean, I just feel like... Oh, uh, it comes back to Todd Glass and his metabolism. It is. It is Todd Glass's metabolism. That's i got to text is. him and let him know that I'm outing his uh, metabolism. Yeah, Todd. He says you don't, have to, you don't have to work at all. He doesn't. Just eat whatever you want. Steak and shake. Night after it's night. It's not steak and shake. It's a steak. And then he has a shake. It's different than the thing. That you what use. sort of steakhouse do you go that actually has a shake? There's only one place that does that. That's no, steak no. and shake. That's well. I'm sure there's more than one. <laughs> it's not like the only place that has a steak. Name manager. another place where you can get a you can get a chocolate malt after a ribeye. Um, look at you, you missed a food guy. Stumped uh, you. This is like stumping the swami on the uh, fucking ESPN back in the day. <laughs> the swami. The swami. Whether you'd stump yeah. uh, what's his face on that metal show, Eddie Trunk. Yeah, there was the, yeah, the uh, Eddie Trunk of food. Yeah. No, I can't. There's got to be something. But like I'm uh, talking about like a steakhouse, steakhouse. Yeah, steakhouse, steakhouse. Where they got all these bourbons and then all of a sudden the corner's <laughs> making a shake. Get the fuck no, out I'm of sure here. on dessert they have some decadent thing, you know? You ever get the... No, no, this is what you're doing. Now you're fucking, you're, you're expanding what you just said. You just said this. that's not the only place that does it. And I said it is. I, I always, whenever I talk to you, I feel like I'm talking to a lawyer. It's just like, well, you're like... waffling. I mean, because then when it makes it seem ridiculous that five minutes ago I disagreed with you when you smoothed everything out. You know, I don't know. It takes me that back to the... Remember that one of my favorite Paul Reiser jokes? Yeah. Well, somebody's telling you a story and they go, hey, you know what? Correct me if I'm wrong. He goes, correct me if I'm wrong. I wasn't even there. How about you come back when you know what the fuck you're talking about? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. It is funny. It is funny. Comedy's funny. Paul Reiser, I saw him tape a special in New York when I, right? I think I, I don't think I had even tried stand up. And he came up during that time when if you actually got a sitcom on the air, you were sad. And, 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 and got that the hundredth episode. That's what everybody was going for. And it was like there was that weird thing where, you know, that is flipped where you stop doing comedy 
because you were making so much money doing TV. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, you go, you do a TV show now, now as a comedian, it actually costs you money. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's What's crazy. crazy is it's just as much work as it ever was to do a TV show. It's just that this is what happens when everyone gets one, I think. Um, we were on a, a streaming service the other night. I, oh, I was, was I? I was on, uh, I was watching the new South Park. Have you seen what they got? No, no. Oh, it's like post- Is it the Christmas one? It's the one where the kids are all grown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's post-COVID and what happened yeah. to it. It's pretty dark, man. It's pretty crazy. So I was just kind of going through all of those things. And I, this one streaming thing, there was just so many good shows. It was just overwhelming. And what always happens, I just shut it off. And then I just go and I'll watch like Jack Lord on Hawaii Five O, Or I'll watch, uh, you know, Robert Stack, The Untouchables. No, there's a lot of shows- Jake like, and the Fat Man. What about Rockford Files? Did you ever watch that? I loved the Rockford Files. Rockford And Files. I never realized how fucked up his personal life was. He lived in a mobile home? Mobile home, like down on the beach. He, I always and, thought it was a cool house. Yeah, no, it was a mobile home. <laughs> he had a cool car, didn't he? Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't like, uh, no, he didn't. He actually had... A station wagon? No, he no. had, he had the, the Firebird... Uh, a spirit, I think it was. So you remember yeah. how, like, with the with the with the Camaro, there was the Z twenty eight, the Berlinetta, the Rally Sport, and then I think there was a base model. So like, they oh. all had the same body type, but they all had different suspensions and engines. So oh, the wow. Z twenty eight was the one that you wanted. So with the Firebird, it was the Trans Am, then the Formula four hundred, and then the Spirit, I believe. So this is kind of interesting because this is right before Burt Reynolds did. Um, smoking the bandit and made that car iconic so when that thing was coming to series they wanted to give him uh the trans am with the the, the you know whatever they call it the fucking flaming eagle on the, on yeah, the, the thing bird on the and he bike. goes no nah, man this guy wouldn't drive that because he was going like this guy lives in a trailer home yeah yeah um and then they go all right what about if we give you the formula 400 which had the trans am i think the 6.6 .6 liter in it it just didn't have all the decals but it still had the side scoops and the hood scoops, so it still looked badass. So he said, all right, get me the Formula 400 and have it look like in a spirit. So that's why it had the radial white wall tires, oh, wow. and it had those rims on it and stuff. But actually, under the hood, he had a badass engine. There were a lot of guys, you know, like, so there was, uh, who was Jack Klugman living on a boat? He was an MD. Um, you know, it was later on. <laughs> Quincy. Quincy. Yeah. Quincy. There were I a lot of Quincy. these guys that were just like these, like l lone range, like uh, solo guys, just kind of, you know, they were having some fun, but like they lived kind of a simple life. That that probably had an impression on us. That's why we're in comedy and we're in our I 30s know, but just I, living by ourselves because Quincy and... And you know. that's also writers in the writer's room. I think they, they would live vicariously through them. Like, what if I didn't get married? What if I was a badass and that type of stuff? So they wrote all of these fucking, these great guys. And I think they just, they created this standard of guy that nobody could live up to. And then I think like the last 20 years has been about sort of tearing that guy down. Um, I don't know. And maybe, I don't know. Maybe I don't like that. They do that. A lot of shows do that now because it makes me feel, um, makes me feel old. Or stupid because I used to watch, I watched all of those action hero guys. Saw every one of those movies. So it's funny. I'm sitting here making fun of the fucking Marvel yeah. movies and all of that shit. So what action and then meanwhile, movies? What action? Every you... fucking one that came out. Every Schwarzenegger. Okay. Every every Rambo, Chuck Norris. Every Rambo. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Every muscle from Brussels. That guy. Every fucking yeah. Steven Seagal. Uh, I used to watch ones of people that they, they you know like guys who would get spit like guys who would uh the guy who played ivan drago i think he had a couple where they tried to make him a star in those things yeah. I, I watched all of every by the way he's super smart by the way i think he's like a genius oh he is all right, all right. i never thought he was um, stupid <laughs> well you said he was yeah. stupid no but like no, i said every stupid movie i went out yeah watch. oh no i was joking I, I didn't mean it like that um but he yeah, those movies. It's it's interesting. So like, there but like there was an ounce of reality that existed in the unbelievable uh, aspect of Rambo. Do you know what I mean? 
But like now they're just like they're like, look, don't he doesn't even have to be a Vietnam vet. He's just like a guy from another planet. But we there was I just Superman. watched the last one. I loved it. It was just Superman, right? Or and uh, well, right now I wanna I wanna take back everything I said about Marvel. Uh, movies because now I realized that I was the Marvel movies I was watching them growing up were all the action movies which if you really looked at them so many of them were like you know a lot of the shit that they still do today there's a guy he used ex military people come in they fuck with them don't yeah. realize they're fucking with the wrong guy it's the uh, that uh, what the fuck's that guy's name he does all of those he does like nine of those movies where it's just like if you fuck with my family oh yeah yeah Liam I'm Neeson gonna, I'm gonna fucking yeah. kill you. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Yeah, he's kind of like... I'm going to wrap the around your fucking neck. I don't want to yeah. fucking kill you. But, like, the, the thing about the Marvel movies is that... And I'm... Because I have kids. I wouldn't have seen them, but I have seen them. Is they are... You know, there's a lot of complex storyline. I love the Batman like, one. It's still, you know, like a guy in tights, but... I know, they're better than you the know. ones we had. Whatever. I'm just it's, a fucking yeah. old guy bitching. I will tell you, I did see Superman versus Batman, and uh, I should have brought earplugs. I mean, I thought ACDC really? was quieter than that fucking movie. It was so fucking loud, and they just beat the fuck out of each other, destroyed a whole city. And they literally, there was like 100 skyscrapers, and they threw each one another into like 98 of them. Wow. And you know, it's like, did you ever see the 300? The Chrysler 300? No, it's a, it's a movie called The 300. I think it was called The 300. I think it was called 300. 300. 300. How old do we sound? Did, <laughs> what did, did you, you see the 300? <laughs> there was... <laughs> did you see the John Elton concert? <laughs> Were you a fan of the Star Wars? <laughs> did you see the Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to say that. Is she on that internet? That um, internet. That internet. I don't know. What about 300? 300 I liked. Yeah, see, like, it was interesting, but I, it was so kind of special effecty. I was kind of, like, when it comes to history, I love history. So I was like, more history, less, Less airbrushed know. abs? Yeah, or just kind of like, <laughs> now there's a monster that comes out of the ground that you have to deal with.